Hello everyone and welcome back to another video about this 46 motherboard from PC Chips. Unfortunately, I lost my audio tracks, so this will be a video with voiceovers. There will be cuts in the video, I'm sorry for that, but I couldn't use what was left of the audio tracks, so yeah, sorry. Anyway, this board gave me a lot of trouble last time because not only did it have fake cache chips, it had a one-time programmable BIOS and the real-time clock chip has a reversed pinout. So yeah, all of this we figured out last time. If you want to see the video, please be my guest and watch it. But today we want to figure out what difference the level 2 cache makes for this board. Now in the last video we couldn't make the level 2 cache work. And there is a simple reason for it. The BIOS doesn't support it. Luckily the RetroWeb has BIOSes for this board and they are not modified. Meaning they do support level 2 cache. And as you can see here in this chart, Speedsys now reports the correct cache amount. So that's great. I could get the level 2 cache to work. This obviously happened between the end of last video and now. But yeah, all I had to do was to replace the BIOS chip. This, by the way, is an SST 29 e 10 and seems to be compatible with this board. The good news is that UniFlash now detects the BIOS chip and you could even go ahead and flash it in DOS. However, we still have more work to do. Since this board was always fixed to 256 kilobytes of fake level 2 cache, they didn't even bother to put jumpers on this board that are responsible for configuring the level 2 cache. This is the first thing we have to take care of. We have to add jumpers that we can configure between 256, 512 and 1 megabyte of level 2 cache. Okay, let's see if the board still works. I put the jumpers exactly in the same position as the solder bridges were before, and let's see if we still get 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache. So if you're booting, that's great. We also see on the boot screen 256 kilobytes cache memory. This is great. 
let's run speedsys. And yes, we still have our 256 kilobytes level two cache working. That's great. However, there is one issue I have with this board, and this is the selection of the cache strategy for the CPU. Right now, the board only supports write through for the CPU. Intel and AMD released enhanced versions of their CPUs at some point, and that means you could have an Intel DX2 with write through or write back functionality. The CPU supporting write back for the level 1 cache can also be configured as write through but not the other way around. I have an enhanced version, but unfortunately it only works in write through mode. And this is because of the motherboard. Early socket three motherboards may lack the capability to configure the CPU for write back mode. But the motherboard we have here is a late model because it has PCI slots. So chances are high that we can configure the CPU for write back. But for that, we have to first look at the pinout and then look at the manual. Now this is a socket 3 pinout and there is a specific pin with the designation B13 that is responsible to put the CPU either in write through or in write back mode. If the pin is grounded, the level 1 cache is configured as write through mode. And if this pin is high, the CPU operates in write back mode. Right now when the board is powered on, there is no voltage on this pin. That means that any CPU that is in the socket will be configured as write through. But I want to have it as write back. So I kept looking for the jumper that pulls our B13 pin high. And I found it. Actually, there are two possibilities. Now it gets important to look at the manual. If you look at certain CPU models and you know which features they have, you may be able to figure out which jumpers control which feature. Because sometimes there are just one or two jumpers different from another model that doesn't have the feature. And then you know exactly that this jumper is controlling a certain feature. And I found two jumpers that seem to control the cache. But one is only set for Cyrix CPUs. So maybe we can ignore it and focus on the other one, which is this one. The middle pin here is connecting to B13 on our socket. And one side is zero volts or maybe not even connected. And the other side is five volts. So I believe we can just move our jumper from this position to this position. And now our CPU should operate in write back mode. Now, if you're concerned about the five volts, I was too, and I checked the datasheet of an AMD 5x86 because they are definitely 3.3 volt CPUs. And apparently IO pins are five volt tolerant. So we shouldn't have an issue with 3.3 volt CPUs on this board either. But I will stick to my DX266, which I will overclock to 80 megahertz. Okay, then I guess let's see if this one jumper is really controlling our cache strategy on our CPU. Okay, let's go into the BIOS. And... Oh, look at that! Our option is no longer grayed out. We can control now the cache strategy for the CPU. But I do have a concern. Yes, we can control in the BIOS which cache strategy we want to use. However, we used a physical jumper on the board. That option in the BIOS will not have any effect on the cache strategy the CPU is using. We have to move the physical jumper. Now let's try if we can increase the cache size to one megabyte. For this, I will use these cache chips. They have four extra pins compared to the ones that you have seen before. And hopefully we will see 1024 kilobytes of level two cache. Of course, we will test this in speedsys and we should get the drop now at one megabyte instead of 256 kilobytes that we have seen before. So the eight kilobytes drop is okay. And I think the performance looks good. I think this is higher than when there is no cache installed at all. We passed now the 256 kilobytes and here is 512. And now at one megabyte, we should drop. And there we go. We have one megabyte of level two cache on this board and in that system. Now we have a board that supports write through and write back CPUs as well as write through and write back level two cache. But now there are two questions I would like to answer. First, what's an optimal size of level two cache for such a board with a DX266 or in my case overclocked to 80 megahertz? And second, which cache strategy is performing better? But not only between write back and write through, I want to see some results when we combine the strategies. For instance, write through for the level two cache and write back for the level one cache and vice versa. So let me run some benchmarks and then I will see you again once the charts are ready.
Okay, I did run a lot of benchmarks and I hope this is clear. So you see on the left side, you see the size of the level two cache. This is from zero to 128. Yes, we could configure this board also for 128. I only have one test result for this, but I have four test results for 256 kilobytes. And that is because these are the four different combinations that we have when we configure the cache strategy. WT stands for write through and WB for write back, obviously. The left is the level one cache and the right is the level two cache. Then we have one test result for 512 kilobytes and again four for one megabyte. Also, I want to bring your attention to the x-axis of this chart. All charts are not starting from zero. I did this so it's easier to see the difference between the different test results because sometimes there is really not a big difference. So then let's talk about Doom on the 486DX280. What we can see immediately is that if you don't have any level 2 cache, then you are leaving a lot of performance on the table, specifically when your CPU does not have a write back level 1 cache. Once we move up to 128 kilobytes, there is really not much you can do wrong except running all caches in write through. So have at least one of your caches in write back mode and then you will get 29 frames or more in Doom. Then let's move on to Quake. And here we see a similar picture. It is actually very similar. If you don't have any level 2 cache, you get the lowest performance. And remember, this board had fake cache chips. So yeah, this is what you got. You can increase the performance in Quake if you add at least 128 kilobytes of level 2 cache, but you get better results if at least one of the caches is operating in write back, exactly what we have seen in Doom. In Top Bench, we can see once more that the write through cache strategy is inferior to the write back strategy. However, in this benchmark, it doesn't look like the level 2 cache plays a big role, specifically when your CPU supports a write back cache strategy. It is almost on par with the best results. So yeah, take these results with a grain of salt. Let's move on to 3D Bench. And here we can see again, you need at least 128 kilobytes of level 2 cache. Also, if you have multiple cache levels in your system, make sure they are not all running in write through, because you're losing quite a bit of performance here. Now it is also interesting to see that you're leaving performance on the table if your level 2 cache is configured as write through. The level 1 cache strategy here is not as important. Now let's move on to Chris's 3D bench. And here we can see again that if you don't have any cache in the system, you get the worst performance. But if you do, make sure at least one of them is configured as write back. This will give you a few extra percent in performance. Also here, write back level 2 cache seems to be more important than write back level 1 cache. Let's move on to NSSI, the dry stone calculations. And here we can see again that if you have cache or no cache and you only run on write through, this yields the lowest score. Otherwise, double write back gives the best performance and level one cache and write back has a higher impact than level two cache and write back. Okay, and finally, let's have a look at some speedsys values. You get 30 points if you have at least one write back cache. And if you only have write through, you get 28.87. Let's move on to memory speed. And here is something very interesting because the write through strategy seems to be performing better, or at least you get a higher memory speed. But this is the only test where write through seems to be performing better. I don't believe this is something that really makes a big impact in your system. I think also this one has to be taken with a grain of salt. But anyway, interesting to see. Let's move on to level two cache. The first two results are empty because, well, there is no level 2 cache. When both caches are configured as write through, you get a higher performance compared to having the level 1 cache in write back. So in write through write back, you get a better score than in write back write back. And finally, the level 1 cache. And here is not much to say, but having your CPUs in write back mode gives you the best performance. And this is also true if you have no level 2 cache in your system at all. It almost is as fast as having a system with cache. Okay, these are all the results I have. What did we learn? I think it's quite obvious that if you have the possibility to change your cache strategy to write back, do it. Yes, there were some occasions where write through was performing better, but overall I believe that write back is the better cache strategy. This answers our first question. But the second question, how much cash do you really need? Looking through these charts one more time, I think 256 kilobytes is a really good size for level 2 cache on a 486 platform. Yes, 512 kilobytes does give you a small bump, and if you move up to 1 megabyte, you get again a bump, but that one is really minimal. You will probably not feel it anywhere. 
But if you want to max out your board, or you have a lot of system memory that needs to be cached, you can go ahead with one megabyte. This board supports it. But let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think 256 kilobytes is enough? Or do you know of any scenario where 512 or one megabyte of level two cache is beneficial? Write it in the comments and see what others have to say. Okay, and this is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank all my Patreons for supporting this channel. If you want to become a Patreon, head over to Patreon and you know the rest. Leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I will see you in the next video. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your time. Take care and bye bye.